With two people, uh, you're not wearing a mask, you're not social distancing. We should point out one of those people is your wife. Uh, what about the other person? The other person, a very close friend of mine. And John, I, I understand, that I think this is sort of mischievous with this mm -hmm. thing going around. I had my mask around my chin, I had taken it down, I was totally dehydrated and I was drinking water, trying to re rehydrate myself. And by the way, I was negative COVID literally the day before. So I guess people want to make a thing of that. I wear a mask all the time when I'm outside to pull it down, to take some sips of water and put it back up again. Uh, I guess if people want to make something about that, they can. But to me, I think that's just mischievous, John. Just wanted to give you a chance to respond. Um, did you have any input, Dr. Fauci, into the president's decision to cancel the Jacksonville convention? And what are your thoughts about what he did yesterday? Apparently, well, Fauci John, had surgery. Directly speak to the president. Really? Did you guys hear oh, about what this? Happened? Yeah, I'm going to bring that up real oh, quick. Let's find out. What'd you say? Fauci had vocal cord surgery, apparently. It's probably from all the screaming into his pillow at night from all of the incompetence from anyone in the White House. Probably from taking it in the back of the throat from fucking Donald Trump. Motherfucker. Dr. Take a listen. This is Dr. Fauci. Dude, he's like 80. If, if he it weirds really me out when people that old have to get surgery. Just getting anesthetic could wait, kill him. Wait, Fauci's that old? Although apparently Fauci's it didn't. No. You didn't know I that? I mean, he doesn't look 80. No. To the man's credit, he's a fascist sympathizer. He's that 79, yeah. As much as he should, but oh. he definitely doesn't look 80. <laughs> wow. Well, he's not yeah, he's 79. Exactly. Oh, okay. Uh, clearly on so December 20. Oh, dude, his birthday is Christmas Eve. He was born on Christmas Eve, 1940. A day that will live in infamy. Dude, Dr. Fauci, I'm sorry you never got a proper birthday, man. I hope he got, like, double presents. We can, we can only hope. Maybe that's why he got vocal cord polyps. He ate too many fine candies. Well, I mean, his youth. parents owned a pharmacy. He doesn't look like the type, though. He seems pretty yeah, healthy. his parents owned a pharmacy, so I imagine he was fairly healthy growing up. Even before he was, you know, thinking of being a doctor. But will we be healthy if we go to vote? Tell me, Paul, man. Uh, in the sense of telling him that that's something he should do. But it's no secret around the White House how I and my fellow task force members feel about the issue of congregating in crowds. Uh, I believe he and others in the White House have heard us speak about that. So I would hope that that maybe had some influence in the decision. But I think it was a good decision, not only a decision about that, but as you can see, uh, the president has come around now about wearing a mask and has actually been recommending it. So I think we're moving in a really positive direction in that regard. I've noticed a real shift. We finally in, convinced in his tone the baby this past to wear week a mask. These coronavirus briefings, a much more sober assessment of the situation as opposed to these rosy projections that he was giving us earlier in the year. Well, well, that's true. I mean, I, I think what's happening is you're seeing an evolution of a realization of the reality of what's going on, and I believe he's adjusting to that right now and acting. He's according. getting his head out of his an ass. An evolution. <laughs> it's an evolution of the realization of the reality of the situation. It's a it was a revolution alone just trying to get the president to wear a mask. <laughs> we, we have... <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, like, it's just any small fucking wonder how they managed to pull that the, off. The amount of men that died to achieve this goal. <laughs> so, you know, I'm very, uh, in many respects, positively responding <laughs> to that because that'll set a good example for the rest of the country. Uh, we started off this hour with an open letter from 150 doctors and other healthcare professionals saying it's time for the United States in the face of growing coronavirus cases to hit the reset button and shut down for a second time. Is that something you would support? You know, John, I don't think it's necessary to do that. Uh, you know, it might come to that. But right now, I think if you look at what's going on in some of the southern states, particularly that are having the resurging of cases, you can put a pause on what you're doing or even maybe take a step back. Let me give you an example. But they certain won't. of these states or cities are in a phase two of the guidelines of opening America again, you might want to either pause or go back to phase one, or if you're in phase one, go back to the gateway component of the guideline. So I, I, I'm not so sure you need to, all of a sudden, everybody 
go back to a complete lockdown. You know, it could come to that. You always got to leave that on the table. But I think Never we can probably get around that, what we're doing uh, now. The only and countries that are successfully uh, just being uh, able to thrive and function after this or uh, during this pandemic are the ones that shut down, like straight up shut down completely for a set period of time. And even then, I think New Zealand had a case recently, didn't they? But it was from a foreigner, wasn't it? It was from like a docker, or like a U.S. ship or some ship yes. that they think brought it in. Yes, as we covered previously, um, we have been exporting our plague and we caused a new case in New Zealand, a new cluster actually. Yeah, good old American know-how getting Number coronavirus one. any way possible back to those those rascally New Zealanders thinking they're so good not have any active cases. USA, number one. USA, number one. <laughs> in infection and in deaths. Being a bit more caution. You know, John, there are some fundamental yes. things that everyone can do number in, every one. in every city. And we've been speaking about them. Things like continual wearing of masks. Everybody wear a mask. Two, avoid crowded places. Stay social distancing. Close the bars. Wash your hands and other hand hygiene. If we just do that, I believe we can have a major step in the direction that we want to go. Let, let, let me ask you, Dr. Fauci, about, about masks, because you back in March did not recommend wearing masks. The Surgeon General didn't either. And I know the reason back then was because you thought that that PPE should be left for the frontline healthcare professionals and not have everybody else on the planet trying to gobble it up for their own personal use. But had you back then advocated strongly for some sort of facial covering, whether it be a scarf like Dr. Burks was wearing or whether it might be these cloth masks that are ubiquitous now, would we be in a different place now than we are? Well, I think we would have been somewhat better off if people were continually wearing masks back then, John, but you can always second guess yourself and say what could have been or what should have been done. At the time when we were told that there is a serious diminution in the availability of PPEs for the people who really need them back then, and also back then, we didn't fully realize how, in, how significant the amount of asymptomatic infection was, and importantly, the fact that people who were asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic could transmit the virus, something we know for sure occurs right now. So the situation was different. I mean, you acted on the information you had at the time. I believe that in the context of that, it was not unreasonable what was being done, but as you get more information the way we have right now, there's no question what we should be doing. And that's why everyone is uniformly recommending the use of masks. Define you know, there are everyone. In other places around like the world what? have been doing Within well, places like Australia, places like Hong Kong. Doubt it. Which Within state makes me governments, wonder, is, is this virus doubt it. Definitely not everyone in the fucking country. Suppose the medical establishment, perhaps? Inevitable that we can try to control it, we can try to mitigate, but eventually Mother Nature's gonna win out. I don't think so, John. I think that we can uh, address this and so-called confront this virus by doing the kinds of public health things that we do. If we can keep the virus at bay until we get a vaccine, which as we've mentioned multiple times with you in prior discussions we've had, that I feel cautiously optimistic that we will have a vaccine in a reasonable time likely by the end of this year and the beginning of 2021. You know, on Monday, uh, a candidate is going into phase three trial, which yeah. is to determine efficacy, which is really good news. I think if the, as a global community, including obviously us here at the uh, United States, if we can do the kind of public health measures to keep the viral outbreak at a very low baseline level, I don't think we're gonna eradicate it. I think it's just so easily transmissible that I don't think that that could happen, but we certainly yeah. can control it better than we're doing. And if we can do that at the global level, when we get a vaccine, I think we could really stop it dead in its tracks. I've got to ask you one more question, Dr. Fauci, because it's been a while since we've had a, a chance to talk. And that is the relationship between you and President Trump. Here's what he told Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday last weekend. I have a very good relationship with Dr. Fauci. He's a little bit of an alarmist. That's okay. And I spoke to him at length yesterday. Dr. Fauci at the beginning said, this will pass. Don't worry about it. This will pass. He was wrong. Dr. Fauci said, don't ban China. Don't ban China. I did. He then admitted that I was but right. But you made mistakes, too. I guess everybody makes mistakes. We just got a short little bit of time left, but I got to ask you, what is the relationship? I mean, you're both very forceful personalities, but it's like, he'll say something, then you say something, and then it's back the other way. What's the relationship like? You know, it's, it's good, John. Seriously, I'm not just saying that for the sake of saying it. You know, I had a nice long conversation with the president just a few days ago. It was really a good conversation. It was constructive. It was good. I, you know, I believe we, we've always had, and still to this day, have a good relationship. And I'm sure, as you know, you ask the president, he would say the same thing. And, and he's being honest about it. All right. Well, as always, we wish you a lot of luck because this is a problem we definitely need to try to get a handle on. Dr. Tony Fauci, always good to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Thoughts? The thing I the will you guys be uh, the wearing thing I, the Brr. thing I like to uh, get the out of here. I like to use the most on people who uh, 
who try and deny the effectiveness of face masks is uh, the cum sock example. Oh, yeah. Good old cum sock example that you love to to mention. Yes. Oozing with knowledge, this cum sock. Yes. Oozing with uh, loads and loads of information encoded to the very (laughs) fabric. Yes. Um, so, uh, come rags aside, yum, yum. what's, uh, what, what, uh, 